Hi, this is Frank Carmody, and we're going to take a look at more uh, 2D to, 2D sketching tools. So we're in Inventor, uh, and we're going to go to uh, last time we um, we clicked this down arrow to get our part file, uh, and this time we're just going to click on the new button. Uh, so click on the new button, and we're going to select standard IPT. A lot of students will click will choose sheet metal IPT, which creates a lot of problems later on. So you want standard IPT for now. Uh, and then click on create. You can also double click that standard IPT, but we're going to click create. That gets us to our IPT file. Now just as usual, we want to click create 2D sketch. We go over, we choose our plane that we're on. Okay. All right, now um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the spline tool this time. Uh, and the spline tool is a little bit more difficult. Okay, we're going to do it twice, and I'm going to use, uh, you'll see how we're um, going to, we're going to do it two ways. Okay, so the spline tool, we click once, move our mouse. We click again. Now, uh, what you're going to see here is that the points are going to define where the spline curves. So we make our second click, move the mouse again, and notice that where I put that, that third click is going to determine the curvature of that spline. Okay. Okay, so we go ahead and click again click again. Now notice I can finish this spline by by clicking the check mark or OK. All right, that will get me a, a complete spline. There's a second way to do this though. Okay, I can also, if I'm still in the spline tool, I can click, 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 and after my last click I can right click and hold down the right click. So I click and hold the right mouse button and then I go over the create. So notice this heads up display here. This is called the heads up display. So I right clicked, I'm holding down, not right clicked, but I've mouse down on the right click button. Okay, and it, that way I'm, I'm selecting this heads up menu. Okay, so I can go finish 2D sketch, I can do create, I can switch between tools all on this heads up display here. And I'm continuously holding down the right click button. I, I mouse over the create button and let up on the right click mouse button and it creates my spline for me. Okay, now dimensioning a spline is very difficult so uh, we're not going to go into that right now. We could go into dimension this like we could go we can create dimensions like between the two points if we wanted. Um, uh, we can go back we can create um, you know the length between them um, but it gets very uh, kind of tricky to, to uh, dimension a spline. Okay, um, so we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to leave that for now. Um, now this brings up a problem though. So notice I've, I've made a dimension that I don't want. If I want to go in and delete that dimension, I can't just right click on the dimension. Okay, uh, well I can, but I'd have to click OK first. That gets me out of the dimensioning tool. Then I have to right click on it again and choose delete. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, we created two splines. Now we're going to go ahead and create an ellipse. Okay, ellipse is a little bit different. You actually want to click where you want the center of your ellipse. So our first click is on the center of the ellipse. I pull it out and notice the dotted the, or the dashed line. Uh, I click again to set the length of that dashed line, and then I pull up or down to set the the height of the ellipse. So I click again, and that gives me the height of the ellipse. Okay, now for dimensioning purposes, if I click on the outside of the ellipse, notice that what it gives me is the height here. Okay. Okay, and I want to go ahead and delete that um, <clears throat> that dimension. back into the dimensioning tool. I click on the outside of the ellipse here. Notice that depending on where I go with this dimension it will give me different dimensions of the ellipse. So if I want to go on the height I would pull it out here. Okay, If I want to go the width, notice that I can get the width of it as well depending on where I want to put the dimension of the, of the uh, um, ellipse. Now Here's a case where you want to fully dimension things in your drawings. So in the case of the ellipse, I need at least two dimensions uh, to, for it to be uh, fully dimensioned. Right? Now that's a skill that you'll learn later on. Okay, but you want to be aware that things, whether things are partially dimensioned or fully dimensioned. 
don't worry about it for now, but just put on as many dimensions as you can think of. Okay, so I've actually turned that ellipse into a circle at that point. Turn it back into ellipse. Uh, right click OK to get out of the uh, dimensioning tool. And I can also uh, uh, notice that when I'm not in any tool, I can grab the center of a, of a shape and move it around. Okay, same thing with uh, now on the in the case of this spline, if I'm not in any tool, notice nothing is highlighted, I can move the spline around uh, by, by uh, selecting uh, portions of the spline and actually moving them. Okay. Now there is a way to actually uh, select the entire spline. Notice that if I, if I click and drag over the entire spline, then I can actually move the whole spline as is. Okay. So that's actually moving things around on the screen there. Okay, let's go ahead and we are going to create a point. Now, points are very useful for doing certain things in Inventor, so if we do go ahead and do a point, a lot of times when you dimension a point, what you'll do is you actually dimension that point from another point. Okay, so we can dimension that point from another point, right? So let's say we want that point to always be three inches away from the end of the spline. Okay, we can do that. That's fine. Notice that that's a case where we were dimensioning between shapes. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, let's go ahead, and we're going to do a polygon now. Okay, so a polygon tool is interesting. Polygon tool, uh, we have a couple of different. Um, we have a couple of different uh, options there. Okay, we can also choose the number of sides. Let's say I want an eight-sided polygon. Okay, so we're in the polygon tool. Click, drag, click. Okay, to get our polygon, and done. Okay, then of course we can dimension the side of this polygon. And notice what happens here. Okay, if I do a two inch dimension on that side of the polygon, notice that it's constrained to have all sides equivalent, okay, which is really what you'd want in a polygon, right? Which is fine. So you would just dimension one side, and the constraints that we'll go into later is causing that, that uh, polygon to remain, uh, <clears throat> for all the sides to remain equivalent. Okay, let's go ahead and use the fillet tool, <clears throat> or sorry, the fillet tool. I always forget how to say that. Uh, we're going to get in the rectangle. We create a rectangle. Then we're going to go down and fillet, and we're uh, going to set the radius of the fillet. Okay, now notice I have to have my rectangle first, and notice what happens when I start to click on these sides. See, the fillet will actually appear when I mouse over a side, and notice I can start to uh, click on these sides and make and fillet these actually in the... Um, in the 2D sketch here, okay, uh, and of course we can go back in uh, and actually uh, change the uh, fillet of these. So you wanted a half inch, okay. And notice it changes the fillets on all of those that we did at the same time, okay. So it does it does a lot of things automatically that you may or may not want to do, okay. And notice we can go in then and dimension the sides, and my dimensions are going to run over other shapes here, which is fine for now. Okay, so there we have it. Um, we right click. Now I right click and drag, let up on the right click for OK. And notice uh, I can move this entire thing. An interesting thing happens now. I'm rolling the mouse to, to, to zoom out there. The mouse wheel is very uh, useful. Notice that when I drag a side here, I can only drag it in one um, on one axis there. So I can move it on the Y axis or the X axis, but not both at a time. Okay, so I'm just kind of organizing things. Then I can go over and click the zoom all to make sure I can see all my shapes at the same time. Okay, finally, let's go ahead and add some text. Okay, and the text has quite a few options as well. Um, let's go ahead and add a circle here. So we're going to add the circle in, and we're actually going to do geometry text. So we're going to add the geometry text in. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is select geometry to put the text on. Okay, the text comes up. And this text box is actually pretty primitive in Inventor. Okay, so we're going to put in some sample text. Um, and we actually have, would, would have to go back in and edit this um, uh, quite often. So we can put in some sample text. If we want to change this. Now I'm not in any tool right, but I can double click that text. And you can actually change the position quite a bit. But notice that it doesn't automatically update. So notice that in this box, you're going to have to experiment quite a bit with the text tool 
uh, notice that we have to click this update button and then all of the things that we've changed will be applied uh, to that offset or I'm sorry to that to the text box there so if I change my offset click update um, okay, notice that that moved that sample text way off of the, the line there if I change the size I can update that interestingly enough some of the stuff you have to actually highlight the text so if I highlight sample text and then I change the size notice that in that case then I update it that will actually change the size okay uh, we're at the end here so uh, so go ahead and use these tools um, when you want to save go ahead and click the save button you'll have to click OK to get out of sketch mode and then save it uh, wherever you want to on your file system good luck